Dustin Poirier. Now, we are joined by the new UFC interim lightweight champion. He is the crown prince of Lafayette, Louisiana. He can't be the king because I'm the king. No, I'm just kidding. He's the new king of Lafayette. The diamond, they say they last forever. Dustin Poirier, thank you for joining the Talk to Talker podcast. DC, thanks for having me on, man. Good to, good to talk to you. My man, my man. So, Dustin, in order to go forward, we have to go backwards. And that's back to Atlanta, Georgia, where you won that title. I mean, you've been fighting for a really long time. How did it feel uh, when Dana wrapped that belt around your waist? Man, DC, it felt incredible. I, uh, You know, as, as a young fighter and just as a fighter in general, you dream of that day. Every night, you know, when I lay down and close my eyes and, and hope to make it a reality one day to get that belt wrapped around my waist, you know, I, the, the way it felt there in person, in the moment, felt better than I ever could have dreamed of or ever could have envisioned this feeling, man. It felt it felt right. It felt earned. And, uh, you know, I was just I was just proud, man. A very proud moment in, in my life. You know, it's it's so crazy to watch a guy become a champ for the first time, but then to have to do it in the fashion that you did, because it was a war. I mean, you did not have an easy fight. You and Max Holloway laid it all out on the line. Some guys win it, like, like when Connor won his first belt, 15 seconds knocking out Jose Aldo, you know? Some guys win it in more dominant fashion. You won the fight, you won the fight convincingly, but it was like you had to go through the fire. Do you think that for the style of fighter that you are it kind of just fit that you have to really bite down you know we've, we've spoken personally and you've said in the fourth round i was like you know what this is where i earned it and you did did you feel that that was like the perfect story for dustin poirier yeah and, and in a weird way it wasn't uh you know it wasn't like a territory where i, I didn't think the fight would go in my head going into that fight I thought it was going to be a tough fight I thought I was going to have to dig down you know I, I knew there was going to be times that adversity would present itself in those rounds and uh, that's what fighting is to me though Daniel I, I, I expect that every fight you know very rarely do you get a guy that wins a title and it seemed like everybody was happy you know like there's that bit of excitement when a guy becomes a champ for the first time, but with you, Dustin, because you've been around so long, because you've given such great performances on a consistent basis, it felt like everyone was excited from the announcers to the fans to the organization. It seemed like everybody was happy that you got your moment. Could you sense that? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny you bring that up, but I, I still sense it. Like, uh, you know, from media, from fans, from the organization, like you said, people like yourself who, who you know, have done it. Uh, it. It just feels, and I don't know if that's because people have kind of followed my career for such a long time and feel a part of this journey because, you know, I've been in, in the WC since I was a young man and I had the documentary that came out on Showtime and Netflix when I was uh, a young professional fighter. Uh, I, people might feel more uh, linked to my story because of the long term and, and the behind the scenes stuff that they've seen over the years of fighting. But everybody, you know, like you said, everybody felt like, you know, uh, very appreciative of, of the of the moment with me. It, it felt it's incredible, man. I, I, I uh, I'm overwhelmed by all the all the love and support that I've got. You know, you started to carry yourself as a champion before you go on the belt with the Good Fight Foundation. Talk about that. I know how much it means to you and your wife Jolie. Uh, just what you're doing for our hometown is 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 amazing. And I heard that for as well as you did before when you win a title the numbers went through the roof yeah man we got the you know we got the good fight foundation well i think this was the biggest platform obviously that title fight i did a lot of media um there was a lot of eyes on it so i had the biggest platform to share the goal and share my 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 nonprofit that me and my wife have and uh, it really you know took off people were i had the most donations we sold the fight kits uh, max donated his gloves we made a lot of money and we're gonna make this uh goal a reality and, and it's already in the works they're gonna be uh, breaking ground in six weeks start the construction of a playground here at uh, prairie elementary school in lafayette louisiana and i'm just excited to continue to do these types of things for lafayette and hopefully one day branch out and do bigger bigger things but right now the main focus is on the local community things that i can see uh 
happening. And, and uh, that, that's what we're going to continue to do, trying to try to better Lafayette, trying to help people, make as many people smile and, and feel good as we can through, through this fight. Dustin, you got you got two more people here. DC doesn't usually let us talk, but you got uh, <laughs> you got Nick and Dennis. Uh, we call ourselves co-hosts. I don't know what DC calls us, but we got uh, <laughs> <Definitely not co-hosts. laughs> we want to jump in here. Um, now, speaking of your uh, of being your guy, we got DC. He, he's 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 such a friendly guy, and he's out there making making friends all over the place. Were you were you at all concerned? about DC's friendship with Max and did you, did you think <laughs> DC was conflicted when he was sitting there and, and now and now uh, coming up you got Khabib but he's gonna be you gotta worry you gotta wonder about the guy is he digging for information is he is he loyal to his to his hometown or what's what, what are your thoughts on that I don't know man I'm, I'm glad it's not like boxing where where the, where the ring announcers kind of share their scorecard and stuff like that you know I don't know what DC had on the scorecard that night he might have like a little emoji scorecard on his phone with like a, a heart you're so around. Nick you're so stupid and <laughs> such a shit stirrer hey I was actually purposely not gonna ask any questions about the next fight that was just like I was just gonna let it go because Dustin tends to like to throw that out every time we talk like so what you got what you got what you got so it's like but here comes Nick with his fucking scraggly beard trying to start some shit <laughs> Hey, hey, it's Dustin. all good, man. So, hey, that's, this is a business we in. Hey, Dustin, so as we talk about the next fight, you get to fight Habib Nurmagomedov, which is, you know, undefeated, light heavyweight, light, lightweight champion of the world, guy that's been dominant in so many areas and so many fights. And honestly, after the performance against Connor, you talk about the massive platform you had last time. This will be a bigger platform. How do you prepare for the enormity of of the event that you're going to face when you and Habib fight? You know, this is going to be crazy. Um, but I don't want to jump the gun because I, I haven't, you know, I don't have a fight contract yet. And uh, I'm just waiting to, to find out exactly all the details. But it looks like everything's pointing to Abu Dhabi September 7th. It's going to be, you know, a huge show. But we'll, I'm going to cross that bridge when I get there. This is just another fight to me, man. This honestly is just another fight to me. Well, what can you do? Like, if you if if you had a fight where you're like, I got to be, there's certain fights where you've got to be more aggressive, or there's certain fights where you've got to focus on, you know, grappling more than more than striking. Like, it may be a question that doesn't make any sense, but I'm just trying to we're trying to relate everything to that in business. And so I was thinking, you know, fighters have to risk stand. versus reward. Dude. Yeah, risk right. versus reward. Yeah, I, I believe it comes down to. Thanks for summarizing, DC. That was much better than my uh, than my. <laughs> he's a two minute fucking hey, question. Hey, I got three. Like, I got three words to answer that one. Hey, Dustin, <laughs> fuck. And then you start going at him, and he gets even more fucking nervous. His asshole puckered so tight. He, yeah. Then he starts going in a complete circle. I, I think the C, <laughs> the, 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 the C and DC stands for clip notes. Hey, Dustin, <laughs> then you're like, I don't understand what the fuck you're saying. And then he really starts running. Fucking did two miles to get the risk versus reward. Dude, it's early. I, I'm still working on that coffee. What the hell? It's it's kind of risk versus reward, but it's but you gotta you gotta my it's risk versus reward, but it's also what are you doing? You know, you've got to lay the foundation so that you're able to take risk because then it's not. You know, no one risks something just for the sake of risking it. You only risk it for, for the reward. But if if I went in the cage and just started fucking throwing haymakers, that's just stupidity. <laughs> that's not risk. Right. I, I think it comes down to to fight IQ and and discipline and maturity. Just how long you've been around and, and the making decisions on the fly in there. You know, I've been fighting for a while, and I feel like at this point in my career, I kind of know where I'm at. For the most part on the scorecards uh, i feel like i have a decent understanding of what's going on when i'm in there uh and and you know like risk versus reward like you guys are talking about I, I try to finish these fights and because of that i've been put on the other side you know i've, I've, I've risked it and and come out on the on the losing side because i've risked it all um but i, I finished these guys as well there's, there's a fine line between risking too much or putting yourself in harm's way to get the finish but I'd rather fight this way. I don't want to jab and circle and win decisions. I'm trying to hurt these guys and put these guys away. That's what fighting gets to me. Of course, there's times where you need to be a little bit, you know, more cautious and careful and try to change the momentum of a fight. And then you got to pick your shots and, and slow around down here and there. But at the end of the end of the fight, when the fight's totaled up, I'm trying to finish you. Uh, so that's just how I fight, man. It seems like it's not just how you fight. Like so, at the end of the fight, you talked about uh, there was times where. You know, you would, you, you didn't know if you would, you know, you needed help, like 
pushing through and, and keeping going like so i guess that ties into the risk reward too like what was were there points where you thought like i don't know if this is worth it i don't know if i'll if i'll ever get to the top or if i'll get the chance or there's you know so many politics and you guys don't have complete control of who you fight next or what opportunities are are given to you was that a was that a recent thing or 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 how was that and what did you do to to um to kind of get your bit, mind right. a little bit before this last fight i kind of got frustrated with the, with you know just the years of uh, and the work that i put in uh, i felt overlooked a little bit i felt uh you know i try to stay pretty optimistic and pretty positive i try not to let negative thoughts creep in but uh you know i felt like i was being punished for i'm in the lightweight division i'm on a streak i beat every i've, I've fought everybody i've you know, beat former champions in main events like three times in a row before this fight. And uh, I just felt like I earned a shot at the title. And I felt like I was being punished by by the organization because, because of other guys' actions. I felt like I'm sitting on the sideline. I might have to fight a few more guys before I get a title shot because they these two guys are suspended and I don't know when they're coming back. And if they do come back, they might rematch. And it holds up the division even longer. The division's already top heavy. I just felt like I had done the work and, and haven't got a crack, you know, haven't got my, my due. But like I said, man, I, I just stayed positive. I was out there in Florida training, didn't even have a fight coming up. I just felt like I needed to be there. And I got the call to fight for the titles. The interim title was max. So everything worked out. Everything happens for a reason. I just stayed the path, man. You know, Dustin, um, I just, you know, I got to say this. Back in the day, and I feel this is probably one of the biggest mistakes that we ever made was in, at the American Kickboxing Academy you talk about everything working out the right way but do you remember when I went down to Tim you, to, uh, Tim Crater's gym down there in Lafayette back in the day Tim said I have this that, great that, kid that day I double like you yeah right yeah, that's like running through a brick wall but you did hit you All did right. kind of piece me up with those left hands a little bit I was like yo this kid can okay. box I was like this dude can box he's small but he can really box <laughs> Tim called me and he goes can Dustin come up and train with you guys in San Jose? And I said, yes. But then Bob Cook didn't pull the trigger fast enough. And then you ended up going down to the American Top Team, which is not you going as a secondary option. You probably would have did them both. But think about that now. If you came back then, when we first talked about it, this had to be 2012. You were, in, you were just getting into the UFC, WEC. You and Habib would have been teammates. And then... The whole journey may have been completely different. It's unbelievable, right? Yeah, man. It's uh, and for as big as people think, you know, MMA is. It's worldwide, but it's a small circle. It's a small community. Uh, everybody knows everybody. And yeah, I forgot about that, man. I forgot that we were <laughs> talking to you guys about me coming over there because I, I couldn't wrestle. I, I needed to wrestle, man. <laughs> and you went to American Top Team. It's completely rounded out. That Knowing him personally and being around him is such, and all these guys are. I don't know Joshua at all. I know Fury, I know Water, I know Water very well. Water's a great person. Out of all the athletes and personalities I've ever been around, he's a good being, a great human being, a great dad, a great role model. You can look up to this guy. His money, he's not reckless, he doesn't hang out at clubs, he's not getting drunk, he doesn't use drugs. He's a phenomenal father, started boxing because he needed money to pay for his daughter who's born with a disability. He's a world champion, has 40 knockouts, I think he's 41 and 0 and 1 with a draw with 40 knockouts. So for him to, he's the face of boxing in America, right? There's Canelo, but he's Mexican American, but also he's straight Mexican. But Wilder is a heavy, he's the face of boxing. So when Wilder says stuff like this, when he was, and he said it before, I don't know why it's getting all this hoopla now, especially against Brazil, but he said this before multiple times. But now it's, it's gone wild and it's a, it got picked up by all these certain outlets. It's on ESPN, it's on Fox, and all over. My problem with this is Wes, he doesn't need to do this. As Wilder's coming up, he wants to say this stuff, that's fine. Wilder's at a point now where he's the face of American boxing and he's such a good person. When he talks like this, to me, it brings him down notches where people go, ah, look at this animal. Look at this, Dad, look at this punchy. And I wouldn't have a problem with it if that's all he had. 
if this was just his Wilder's one trick pony, but he's not. He's a great human being. So that's why I don't like him. Of course, I, I know people can die when they box. It's rare it happens. Is it, a, is it part of the game? Not really. But your chance of dying less than 1.001%. One, one, oh, oh, one it's never, it doesn't really happen. Usually it happens from a result of bad weight, weight cutting. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.